Hello there, welcome to the video. We have some winter today. It was like minus two degrees when I drove here. Nice little change from the overcast gray days we have lately. Well, it's still gray and overcast, but there's some white stuff on the ground. Today we are out shooting with the roller flex instead of my normal Hasselblad. How does the roller flex work for landscape and woodland photography? Well, let's find out, shall we? The Rolleiflex camera I'm using is the lesser of the Rolleiflex camera. This is an f3.5, so it's slightly cheaper than the more expensive f2.8. The Rolleiflex is one of those legendary cameras, favored by photojournalists of the past and street photographers. But perhaps not for landscape or woodland. I can see why. There are certain limitations with this camera, and perhaps with most TLR cameras. Let me explain. If you read up online about this camera for landscape photography, there's two things a lot of people bring up. One is the problem with the parallax error. Well, what's a parallax error then? There's two lenses. One for taking the images and one for focusing. So there's a small difference between the two. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're looking out through the top lens. And that will introduce a small parallax error. But in my experience, and I've been shooting with a TLR camera for quite a bit, it isn't as bad, especially not in landscape situation. The further away you are from a subject, the smaller that error will be. And oh, I almost forget. A lot of the TLR camera actually compensate for the, the parallax error. Among other, the Rolleiflex will have compensation built into it, as well as a couple of other TLR cameras. So there might not even be a parallax error to speak of. One of the other issues a lot of people bring up, and that's one I can't deny, that's it's a fixed lens. You can't replace the lens of this camera. And that's true for most TLR cameras, but I don't see that necessarily as a drawback. When I got back into film photography about two years ago, uh, it's kind of started out as a pandemic hobby, I suppose. I bought myself a TLR camera, an Icoflex. I must say, it was really beneficial. Uh, being limited to one focal length helps a lot with seeing, photographing, compositions and all that. So if you haven't tried that, try to commit to a single focal length for a quite extensive period of time. Buying a TLR camera as I did, or just committing to one of your prime lenses. It helps a lot with that photography eye, at least in my experience. So not necessarily a drawback, but hey, it is true, you are limited to one lens, at least with the ruler flex. I do shoot a bit differently with the Rolleiflex, more handheld, more impromptu, not as delicate as I am with the Hasselblad. And that's great in some circumstances, like that shot of that tree. I would never have taken that with the Hasselblad, but with the Rolleiflex, I might as well. Who knows, it might be a nice little winter image. We'll see when I have the film developed. So the woodlands I'm at now, it's quite young trees, uh, quite a similar pattern with the uh, it's like straight rows with a lot of trees. So I'm kind of leaning in towards that, capturing that pattern with the uh, similar trees. Uh, I'm shooting at f5.6 and I uh, and the shot of 1 500th of a second for this particular shot. The film I've loaded here is T-Max 400. And I'm overexposing one stop, or underexposing one stop, sorry. So I'm shooting at an ISO 800 and then I'm going to 
push it one stop in the developing. That's because I wanted to be able to shoot handheld today. The Roloflex uh, suits handheld shooting very well. The shape of it, having it around the neck like I am, and uh, holding like this, works really well. And it's kind of the way to shoot a Roloflex or any TLR camera. And I suppose that's why it was popular with photojournalists and uh, street photographer. And it's also quite discreet. But it's also a great way to explore landscape or woodlands through the lens as this. I might not do that as much to anymore, but it is a nice way to like explore a place through the camera. Speaking of which, let's explore some, some more and see if we can find something else to photograph. We haven't ventured far, a uh, couple of meters. Uh, I'm actually going to prove that point about the, the parallax error. I'm going to set up the tripod with this camera and uh, I'm going to show you how it looks through the viewfinder as well as the final image. Um, speaking of which, I am uh, trying this where I'm uh, breaking up the pattern instead of just continuation with it. So we have this kind of naked tree that uh, I think will be a Nice little addition to it. But I'm going to set up the tripod and, uh, and show you that the parallax error is very small and that this camera corrects it quite well. Uh, this might not be the greatest shot in the world, uh, but if we are having a look behind me, uh, I have this... Uh, wait a minute. Let's do it like this. Uh, we have this like uh, tree that is leaning in towards uh, the image. So that's like my anchor on that side. And then you can see here in the middle there, there is a naked tree. Yeah, about somewhere here. I can't really make out, but there's a naked tree in the middle. So that's like a central uh, little interest, but that is in the background. So I still have this quite prominent tree in the foreground. Uh, and then we have these fallen trees here, or the, some leading lines there, I suppose. Not the best image in the world, but it will prove my point about that parallax error, I hope. A uh, couple of nice things with this camera. Firstly, I know someone will uh, mention the strap. I use a Peak Design strap with these little nice pucks. Uh, it kind of looks strange on this camera, but I don't have a proper strap for it. And if it looks stupid as it works, it ain't stupid. There's a couple of nice things with the uh, Roloflex camera that is specific for Roloflex camera. On the little... Um, a knob that you use to focus, there is this lovely depth of field preview. So in this scene, I kind of figured out that tree, the front tree is four meters from the lens. And I can use that to like just make sure that it's just within the near reach of my uh, depth of field. And uh, then everything else falls where it falls. And I hope that little middle interest is uh, sharp enough. One could have a discussion about what's more important the foreground element or the background element. No, Ansel Adams uh, preferred to keep, it's more important to have foreground elements focus in focus than background elements. So. And now we are going back to handheld shooting. I might be grasping after straws now. But there was something with these birches against those darker trees in the background there and some side lighting on the trees and a nice distribution between the birches might work. Overexposed is a bit more. Oh, overexposed, I think it's properly exposed, but a bit lighter exposure. It's uh, f8 and 1 60th of a second this time. Took two exposures on this one. And I have one frame left. Let's see if we can expose that on something. Sometimes you just have to keep things simple. So a nice tree with some snow on the branches. Slightly off-center. That's the final image of the day.
So then, is the Roloflex a good camera for landscape and woodland photography? Well, it is a good camera and it works well for landscape and woodland photography. As long as you are okay with that single focal length. My biggest problem with the camera is actually the viewfinder. Not because it's a way slow finder, I like that. But the view screen, the matte screen, is quite dark on this model. And there's a heavy vignette to it. So that's my biggest issue with it. Uh, you can actually replace the matte screen for a brighter one, but it adds to the cost. But besides that, it is an excellent camera to be using. And it is, as I said, promotes handheld shooting really well. So if you like handheld shooting, this is probably the best medium for my camera for that. And if you have never shot film, I would suggest starting with a TLR camera, as you can find them quite cheap. I personally got the Icoflex when I started getting into film again. And some of my favorite images are taken with the camera. It worked really well. It wasn't quite as well designed as the Roloflex, but it's a more than decent enough camera. And with that said, it's time to end this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Do take care and bye.